Hello, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I am going to discuss a different way to use Document Builder that enables you to insert content in text boxes, cells, and content controls. This approach enables certain scenarios that are not possible when using the default way of programming with Document Builder. Before we take a look at this new way of developing using Document Builder, let's take a look at the original way of developing using Document Builder. The approach that you take is that you assemble a list of sources and then Document Builder composes those sources into a final document. It appends the sources one after another to create the final document. This example here tells Document Builder to take the first three paragraphs of the document named source1.docx, take the first three paragraphs of the document named source2.docx, and take the entirety of source3.docx, assemble those together, and create a new document named out1.docx. If we look at source1.docx, we can see the title followed by some other paragraphs. The example will take these three paragraphs for composition into the output document. If we look at source2.docx, the example will take these three paragraphs and append those to the output document. And finally, the example will take the entirety of source3.docx. Let's run the example. And let's look at the output. Here we can see the first three paragraphs of the first document. Here we can see the first three paragraphs of the second document. And following that is the entirety of the third document. The programming model then is that Document Builder takes multiple sources and assembles them consecutively into the resulting output document. With this new approach of using Document Builder, what you can do is you can give the sources a name or an ID. Having given them a name or an ID, you can then go into a source document and insert a special element that's in a special namespace that contains an attribute of ID that contains the name of the source to be inserted at that particular point. If you give a source a name, then Document Builder will not assemble this source consecutively into the final document. Instead, what it will do is it will insert this source wherever you place that insert element in a source document. So if we look at this example, the first thing the example does is open up a document named template.docx. It goes into that document and replaces certain paragraphs with this special insert element. It finds the first paragraph in a text box and replaces the first paragraph with the special insert element with an ID with a value of front. Let's look at those documents so we can see what's going to happen. The template document looks like this. It contains a couple of paragraphs. There's a text box in the first paragraph. And following those two paragraphs, there's a table, and there's nothing in the table. This document front matter contains a paragraph followed by some smart art. This document insert 01 contains a paragraph followed by a small image. And this document insert 02 contains a paragraph followed by a small image. So what this example is going to do is it's going to insert that special insert element with the ID of front into the text box. It's then going to find the first cell in the first row and the first cell in the second row and replace the paragraph in those cells with that special insert element. The ID of the first one is Liz and the ID of the second one is Eric. Let's run the example. And let's look at the resulting document. And here we can see that the front matter was inserted into the text box. And those two small documents are inserted into cells in the first column of this table. Another scenario 
might be something like this. You may have a large number of snippets of content. Each snippet is in its own word processing ML document. And you want to insert these snippets into content controls. You may be creating a form that the user is going to fill out. And you want to pre-populate the form with these snippets. Let's look at the template document. This template document contains a number of paragraphs and it also contains a content control with the title and tag of bio-01. And if we look at the document bio-01, it contains a couple of paragraphs followed by an image. This example creates the list of sources. The first source in the list is the template document and the second source in the list is this named source with an ID of bio-01. If we go up here and look at the processing of the template document, you can see that what it does is it finds the content control with a tag of bio-01. It then finds the first paragraph in that content control. It then replaces that paragraph with the special insert element with an ID with a value of bio-01. It finally then calls document builder producing a new document with the name of out.docx. Let's run the example. Let's look at out.docx and we can see the contents of the template document and we can see this content control that has the contents of the other file inserted into it. This new approach of working with Document Builder enables a lot of different scenarios. It enables you to pull content into anywhere in a word processing ML document where it is valid to have block level content. Cells, text boxes, and content controls are three different places where it's valid to have block level content. So therefore it's valid to insert these special insert elements with the ID that refers to named sources. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. Thanks for watching.